So I think a lot of people might think of astrology as just like the quirky horoscopes and newspapers you read just for the fun of it or whatever. And maybe they're a bit more into that than that, but they might not delve any deeper to anything besides their sun sign. So can you explain for us and the listeners why and how astrology is more complex than that? Like what, what even is a full natal chart? Why is it important to have for better understanding of one's unique thumbprint, so to speak, um, compared to just the, sur- the surface level sun sign stuff? Yeah, it's a really important thing to mention. And, and people are becoming more aware of this, I think. But yeah, a natal chart is essentially the map of the sky when you're born. And it's usually presented in like a like a circular form. It's almost like your, I I like to say it's kind of like your unique mandala, Mm -hmm. your geometry essentially. And it's not only delineates where the sun was, the month you're born, right? But it goes a lot more layered into transpersonal connections, meaning like the, the pieces of your chart, like Uranus, Pluto, Saturn, the outer planets that connect us to generations and kind of bigger groups of of people and then the more fine-tuned level of knowing your moon sign which is one of the more personal bodies in your chart and looking at your ascendant your rising sign so that was whatever was right in the rising in the sky the moment that you came in and that's like the most unique point to your entire chart and that's really important in medical astrology is understanding like the person's ascendant because the rising sign is the first house cusp and it represents the individual's physical body. So it's a very big part of your innate constitution and how you're influenced by the environment externally. So for instance, people who are like air or water risings tend to just be more a little more sensitive than uh, people who have fire or earth on the rise, like have a little more of like a, you could say sturdy constitution <laughs> perhaps. Um, but there's a few factors you look at and it's important to look at because sun sign is like, it's like taking one dimension of your, this really beautiful kind of symphony of who you are and like just being like, oh, that's it. You know, it's it's like only reading like the first page of a book <laughs> and then being like, oh, I think I know that book. So, <laughs> The chart is really this like awesome map. And at first it's complex to like learn all the planets and what they represent, know what the houses represent. But eventually when you're proficient in the language of astrology, you can pretty easily look at a chart and grasp like what's going on. And every planet uh, represents a different organ system. Every sign or element that that planet is in will say a lot about how that organ system is in a person for instance someone who has maybe their um moon in in cancer for instance it's it's domicile but it it might might describe a person who has like a pretty sensitive intestines or stomach um, organ system so you can get a lot of clues as to the person's like elemental makeup when you see the whole chart so you might be a libra sun jennifer but you could have potentially your whole chart could have a lot of like earth influence. And then that would really flavor uh, your body type and the way that um, different organs are operating, knowing like that you might have more of an earth dominance despite being an air sun. So it just gives a fuller picture, a more holistic picture than um, just taking your sun sign. But the sun sign, you know, it's an important part. So I think it got kind of extracted into pop astrology for a reason because it's the... You don't need to know your birth time to know your sun sign. So I think it's just for that reason, it's become popular. But as people get more and more into astrology, um, more people nowadays even know like their rising, their moon and their and their sun. It's more commonplace to find. 